teeth. Blasted chompers. Macmillan yanked the offending dentures out of his mouth and hurled them with disgust into the porcelain wash basin, bloody spittle trailing behind them. He wiped the loathsome drool from his chin with the callous heel of his hand and peered into the brightly lit mirror. Using his gnarled arthritic fingers, he prized his lips open to survey the painful damage. Impatiently tugging the fleshy material this way and that, he sneered at the red weeping sores that peppered his inflamed gums and huffed in disgust, causing a glob of red muck to splatter against the otherwise pristine mirror. He turned and opened the medicine cabinet, rummaging through his wide selection of pills and potions, until he came upon the bottle of antiseptic. He diluted it down in a tumbler and swirled the vile tasting concoction around his lacerated mouth. The release of the liquid into the basin coated the ill-fitting dentures in a wicked-looking red foam that gave the false teeth an air of malicious intent. Macmillan stared down at the teeth. The teeth stared up at Macmillan. The old man's will broke first. He scooped the dentures up and sluiced them out under the cold tap before dunking them in an already prepared bowl of steridant for the night. Your days are numbered, you evil little bastards. He promised, stomping out of the bathroom and flicking off the light. From inside the bowl, the teeth just grinned. Macmillan lay back, his twisted fingers clenching the black plastic and the bright light burning down into his eyes. He breathed shallowly through his nose as the dentist poked and prodded, ummed and ahed, muttered and tutted. The green mass that pulsed back and forth over the dentist's mouth with his breathing combined with the large lens over his eyes, made him look like some curious insectile creature exploring for a warm cavity wherein it might lay its eggs. Or perhaps that was just Macmillan's deep-rooted fear of dentistry, which had led him to lose his original teeth in the first place. He closed his eyes, continued to breathe shallowly through his nose, and imagined himself to be elsewhere. A nice warm beach, a nice cocktail, and the sea sushing on the shore. Yes, that was where he was. Not in the black chair of a London specialist being sized up for thousands of pounds worth of treatment. Eventually, Macmillan felt the dentist pull away, and the seat started to rise back to the seated position. He opened his eyes, and clearing his throat, asked, Well, what do you think? The dentist removed his mask, revealing his short, greying goatee, which he stroked thoughtfully as he seemed to weigh up the options. All in all, I think we can create a new set of teeth for you, Mr Macmillan. Your bones are quite worn down, but that is usual for your age and lack of teeth. However, dental science has advanced incredibly in the last few years, and we can quite literally perform wonders. Yes, 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 Macmillan grumbled. Wonders, I'm sure. But will I have a full set of teeth again? My own teeth? Sir, when I am finished, you will be the proud owner of the finest teeth that you will ever lay eyes upon. Crunch! What a wonderful noise. Crunch! A pure explosion of, of taste, unobstructed by a plastic plate. Crunch! Macmillan sat back in the high-backed oak dining chair and regarded the slender stick of celery. How long had it been? How many years? He could not remember. He had been in his twenties when he would lost his first two teeth. It had been a bar fight, a brawl between two young bucks over some young beauty. The event had cost him physically, but the reward had been worth it. He had worn the gap as a medal of honour, displaying just how far he would go to get what he wanted. Not just in the bar, but also later in the boardroom. Some arrogant toss would square up to him with an inane proposal, as to where this business or that business should go, and all he would do was smile at them. The gap between his top teeth was all he needed to make them back down. Other teeth had followed. He had been a busy man. That was what he had told himself over and over again. In his rational mind, he had no desire to inflict the dentist's chair on himself unless it was absolutely essential. It was time-consuming and time was money. That was what he had told himself. However, at the back of his mind, shrouded in a childhood fear, a set of painted wooden teeth leered at him every time he felt a niggle in his jaw, every time a bowl of ice cream made him jolt in agony. So it was that dread coloured his view of the world of dentistry, 
and the trips between them became even less frequent. It was seen only when the inevitable was required and the teeth had to be extracted. He finally relented to having bridges fitted in order to eat the foods that he liked. But he never found them to be satisfactory. The dental work would rock or rub against his gums. More often than not, he would just do without women in private. As time went by, his own teeth became fewer and the bridges became larger. His bottom set of teeth were the first to go and be replaced by a full denture. The upper set followed soon after. That had been about 20 years ago. 20 years of dull, boring slop and blistering, bleeding sores. Not anymore, though. Not now. Macmillan polished off the crisp celery and turned to the bowl of radishes. He grinned with his new pristine teeth as he dropped one into his mouth and bit it viciously in half. A predator renewed with vigour and able to hunt once more. The sharp tang of the root vegetable made him moan with pleasure. Oh, this was the life! If only he had done this years ago. But the technology had not been around and he had been forced to endure the agony of the old plastic dentures. When he had been younger, Macmillan had always had a reputation for finishing off his meals first. He had been eager to get back to work, eager to get back and make money. Now, though, he sat and savoured every last mouthful. He rolled the masticated fibres round his liberated taste buds and savoured every last delicacy of their sweet, sweet flavours. It took him almost an hour to consume a small salad. He would have been happy to make it last twice as long. But there was something else that he was desperate to reacquaint himself with. Toffee. Macmillan looked at the small golden delicacy. He pulled on the fantails and the wrapper unfell, presenting the hidden treasure within. With the most utmost reverence, he lifted it to his nose and sniffed. The delicious aromas pirouetted in his nostrils, tantalising his senses, and he felt saliva start to build up in his mouth. Oh. Carefully he peeled the sweet out of the wrapper, and lightly held it between a gnarled thumb and finger, before lowering it lovingly onto an accepting tongue. He was sure that anyone passing his house would have been able to hear his moan to pleasure, but he did not really care. Flossing was a new experience for Macmillan. He'd never really seen the need for it before. A perfunctory scrub with a blob of minty toothpaste had been his oral routine once a day. Now, however, he had a considerable amount of money invested in his mouth, and, like a stocks and shares portfolio, it needed care and attention. At first he struggled with the white filament. His arthritis caused him problems in gripping the long thread. But he persevered, and shortly he was able to suck fresh air between his new set of perfect teeth. He grinned at himself in the bathroom mirror and ran his tongue over their surfaces. They felt so smooth, so clean. He could not remember a time when his mouth had looked like it belonged to a male model in a knitting pattern. All he needed was an Aran sweater and the obligatory hazel walking stick. Macmillan ran his hand through the thinning remnants of his grey hair and his eye caught a glimpse of pink and cream on the side of the wash basin. He picked the old dentures up and regarded them for a moment before a twinkle touched his eye and he grasped them between his curled fingers. Why, Howie, he voiced through the false teeth in a warbling falsetto, how dashing you look. Why, thank you. I do believe I feel quite a spring in my step. Could it be that your life has suddenly improved for the better? Wobbled the teeth. Indeed it has. Indeed it has. And do you know why? Why, no, we don't. Macmillan casually dropped the old dentures into the bathroom bin. Because I don't need you pieces of crap anymore. Macmillan knew a lot of people his age had god awful trouble getting off to sleep. They'd lie there, tossing and turning, fretting about all sorts of daft rubbish. Did I leave the lights on downstairs? Did I lock the door? Will I wake up dead in the morning? He had no time for this whatsoever. Bedtime was sleep time, and that was exactly what he did as soon as his hit, hit, head hit the pillow no matter what time in the evening it was. Having been the busy executive, he had always cherished sleep. The more he got, the more fresh and alert he was for a killer deal the next day. This evening was no exception. 
especially with the added bonus of a mouth that did not feel like someone had been stubbing out red-hot cigar butts on his gums. What was different this night, though, was the dreaming. Macmillan never normally dreamed. He normally just closed his eyes, and then when he opened them, it was morning, plain and simple. This night he closed his eyes, and his blissful relaxation loosened his muscles. He was aware of something odd. He was no longer in his bedroom. He was stood on a stage. He frowned to himself and looked around. Yes, it was most definitely a stage, a scuffed wooden surface that had seen many people cross it over the years. There was no lighting, and there was no audience. There were metal chairs set out in rows facing him, but they remained unoccupied. Macmillan ran a hand over his chin. He started. His chin was smooth. Not just clean-shaven, but totally smooth. Then there was his hand. He held up in front of his eyes and gawped at the straight young fingers. Not a touch of a curve to them whatsoever. Well, I'll be, he whispered, as recognition of his location started to seep into his memory. He stared out over the chairs in front of him. Yes. There were the yellow lines marking the letball court. There were the dinner tables stacked in the corner. There, over in the far corner, was the entrance to the canteen. This was his old high school. Most peculiar, young Macmillan muttered to himself, before he realised something else. He could hear a noise. Click, click. His head darted left and right. What was that? Click, click. There it was again. Slightly nearer. Click, click. He's coming from off stage behind the black, voluminous curtains that ran from ceiling to floor. The youth stood transfixed, not breathing. The sound came closer still. Click. Click. Macmillan woke with a shriek and a start, his twisted hand grasping at his chest as he sat bolt upright in bed. Panting heavily, he scanned the room for any sign of the clicking noise, but saw none. Stupid. Stupid. Just a dream, he grumbled, and swung his legs out of bed, only to jump as his heart felt his right foot come down on something hard. When he decided that his head was not going to erupt, heart was not going to erupt out of his chest, he lay chest down on the bed and leant over the side to investigate. He came face to face with a grinning set of teeth. How the? Macmillan pulled himself off the bed, grunted with the effort that bending down required, and scooped up the old dentures. I must be getting senile. I could have sworn I. He shook his head walked over to the dressing table and dropped the teeth into a small circular bin that sat next to the piece of furniture, before returning to bed, closing his eyes and standing once more on the school stage. Damn it, the young Macmillan swore as he quickly surveyed his surroundings. Still the same, old stage, empty chairs, all on his own. And the noise just off stage, click, click. That was it. He had put up with too much. It was time for answers. Macmillan stormed over to the curtains at the edge of the stage and pulled them open. Click, click. There was a noise. But no source. He was coming from further backstage. Carefully, he picked his way through the dark, making sure not to trip over any discarded props or random pieces of PE equipment. Click, click. It was here, in the dark. The noise was just in front of him, goading him, teasing him onwards. He would find it and choke some answers out of it. He was Howard Macmillan, a force to be reckoned with in the boardroom, a surging wave that swept through the business world and claimed all that lay before him. He would not be scared by the tiniest of noises in the dim recess of a puerile dream. Click, click. There it was, to his side. He was right on top of it, so close now. Show yourself, his young voice yelled into the dark. Click, click, came the reply. That was even closer. It was right next to him. Macmillan looked down and saw something scurry in the half-light, a flash of movement. Click, click. Now it was on the opposite side and sounding faster. He spun to face it, when something small and fast darted out of the gloom and placed a wooden hand on his chest. There was something on his chest. Macmillan screamed himself awake and threw back the covers. There was a clatter as something small and hard tumbled to the floor. He darted around the bed and gaped in horror at what lay there, grinning up at him. No! 
His voice was a tremendous gasp. No, no, no! He lowered himself down and poked at the dentures. They just rolled over at his touch, inanimate, unthreatening. The old man slumped onto the bed. Was he losing his mind? Twice they had thrown them away and twice they had come back. This was not possible. Then there was the dream. What, what the hell was that about? Sleepwalking. Yes, that was it. He was suffering from the after effects of anaesthetic and he was sleepwalking when he was dreaming. He'd gone over to the bins, picked up the dentures and carried them back in here whilst he had been asleep. That was the explanation. The rational one, anyway. He picked up the dentures and tossed them over to the bin where they dropped him with a satisfying rattle. And he sat there on the bed and stared at the bin, daring the discarded teeth to climb their way out. They did not. Macmillan went back to bed. He tucked himself in and left the light on. The clock radio said it was 3.05 in the morning. Its red digits glowed dimly as he watched the numbers change. 3.06. 3.07. 3.10. What? He sat upright and rubbed his eyes. He must have nodded off. That was okay. There'd been no dream. He looked warily over to the dressing table, steeled up his nerve and got out of bed. Carefully, he edged his way across the bedroom until his eye line was level with the rim of the bin. He took a deep breath and peered in. The teeth grinned back up at him from its depths. Macmillan nodded slowly to himself, reassured, and made his way back to the bed. He settled himself down, closed his eyes, and... <sighs> Looked out at the empty chairs. Oh no, click, click. Oh no! His young Adam's apple bobbed nervously as he swallowed. This was not good. He had to escape. He had to get out of there. He darted to the edge of the stage and broke to a hole, his arms pinwheeling behind him. This was not right. This was not how it was supposed to be. The drop from the front of the stage was not just high. It was unbelievably high. Nausea rose in his throat as vertigo caused his head to spin. It's like looking off a cliff edge, and yet the chairs still sat there as if just a few feet away. He could not escape that way, which meant only one thing. Click, click. He would have to confront whatever it was that was hunting him. Macmillan faced the rear of the stage and shouted out, Come on then, show yourself. I'm not scared. Click, click, closer. Click, click, closer still. There was a flutter at the curtains and... Was that a foot? A small, wooden foot. Click, click. Macmillan felt his throat dry up at the size of the foot. An image from his distant past started to rise up from the murk of his ancient memory as the foot was joined by a small wooden leg. Click, click. Macmillan started back up. He was not in a very happy place right now. It was 75 years ago and his parents had laid on a treat for his fifth birthday. All his friends had been invited to the party and an entertainer had been hired. Click, click. A puppeteer. Macmillan watched in horror as the curtains parted and the diminutive figure stepped forward. Click, click. He peed his trousers. There in front of all his friends, little Howie Macmillan avoided his bladder down his legs because of one thing. Click, click. The puppet grinned at him with painted lips and glossy teeth as it stalked robotically across the stage. It was a grin that had never known a human soul. It was without mirth or humour. It was a grin that said, I'm coming for you. Not now, not soon, but one night when you least expect it, I'll creep up on you from the shadows and kill you where you sleep. Click, click. Little Howie had turned and bolted out of the living room, screaming and wailing all his way to his bedroom, where he had barricaded himself in until that evening when his distraught mother finally coaxed him out and persuaded him to take a long, warm bath to remove the reek of piss from his legs and the smears of snot and tears from his face. Teenage Howard's fears grabbed his legs and turned them to run, and he fled, hurling himself off the side of the cliff-like stage. The floor, many, many metres below, hit him like a speeding truck. Imagine, if you can, this scene. A quiet house in a peaceful country lane. Walk through this house and listen to the stillness, as you admire the objet d'art in its owners, that his owner has acquired over the many years. Testament to his success as a forthright and no-nonsense businessman. Then, if you feel you can, if you feel you are not intruding, wend your way upstairs. Do not worry about making any noise, for there is no one here to you to disturb. Make your way along the landing, past the open bathroom door, 
where the highly polished mirror reflects your look of curiosity and fear of being caught trespassing. Then on to the main bedroom. Gently open the door and peer around its wooden protection before studying the sight inside. You will see an old man lying still in bed. There is not a sound, not a murmur, not a snore as you tiptoe inside. You see a small waste bin lying empty on its side next to the dressing table. And as you pull back the curtains to allow some light into this place of rest, you can't help but see the red stains blooming out from the bedding which had been pulled up tight around his neck by his stiff, claw-like hands. Bedding which had been drawn up in an involuntary act of self-protection and preservation. As you step forward for a closer inspection, something grates under your shoe. You peer down and see that it is a tooth of sorts. In fact, it is not alone. There are a number of lying, a number of them lying discarded on the floor and across the bed sheets. Picking some up, you examine them and see they are not real teeth, but replicas, fashioned to the highest standards by an expert craftsman. But how can this be, you ask yourself? For the man in bed is grinning in the light of the growing dawn. His lips are drawn back in a cruel rictus, and there for you and all the world to see are a lopsided, ill-fitting pair of dentures. You frown when you realise that the tips of the false teeth are chipped and jagged, as if they've been biting at something exceptionally hard. <laughs>